it's me. Here I am, we're all getting all set up. Nice to have you back in my lovely little French kitchen. Just waiting for everything, for our tech to sort ourselves out. We'll be right with you. Here I am, thank you. Hello, thank you for coming to see me again in my little thrifty French kitchen here in northwest France in Wellgrass, up here in Brittany. Seven people, thank you for being here, thank you so so much. Well, as I promised, I'm going to be cooking as many French things as I can, and lots and lots and lots of French recipes are by their nature really thrifty. And today I'm going to be making buckwheat pancakes, or as we call them here in Brittany, galette. So it's a savoury buckwheat pancake. They are so, so delicious and really, really easy to make. So I'm going to swipe now and see if I can see any comments. Oh, let's say hello to everybody first. Hello, Elizabeth. Hello, Amanda. And hello, Margaret. It's very nice to have you here. It's going to be a bit difficult for me to do this and that at the same time. I'm really going to do my best and do more of talking to you as well. And hopefully if you can hear me. So if any problems you can't hear me properly, please let me know and I will speak up. So let's get telling you about these galettes. I'm going to start off by showing you this. Here we go. So we call this here farin de saracen. So saracen flour. And it's called a buckwheat in the UK, we'd call that a buckwheat flour. It's not, it's gluten free. It's, it's a seed ground down into a flour and it's really, really popular here in Brittany. It's pretty unique to Brittany. It's a very regional dish this. So the buckwheat flour, I'm going to pop things behind me when I finish with them. And then I'm going to talk through this beautiful thing here that I can't use on my little induction hob here because it is bigger than the hob. But I'm going to show you what I would normally use on my big hob. So here we go, it's a lovely big flat crepe, crepe pan. Quite difficult to say crepe pan. So we would use that for a sweet crepes or a buckwheat galette, which is a savoury pancake. Let's put that over there. So sorry, can't use it today. It won't fit on it. When I've tried to use it before on here, I've melted the plastic on my little hob here. So let's swipe away a moment, see if I can see your comments. Hello, Sarah. Hello, Jane. Oh, Liz. Hello, Liz Northcott. And hello, Jan Painter. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Right. Let's get and make these buckwheat pancakes. So if you come over here and I will show you what I've got. In here I have got 250 grams of the sarasan flour, the buckwheat flour. Into that I'm going to add, and I've measured this very precisely, seven grams of salt. And don't you think, oh, that's a lot of salt. This is going to make six to ten pancakes so it makes quite a lot of pancakes so in it goes and then one egg for a very funny story to tell you about the eggs we went for an apero last night which is an early evening couple of drinks with some friends of ours and uh their goat had escaped so they called on the french neighbor to come and help them because it's not their goat it's the french neighbor's goat so the neighbours turned up, lovely local lady, farmer lady, or I think she's a farmer, from what I deduced from her. She's either a farmer or a smallholder, rescued the goat. Anyway, we stopped and had a chat with her and she was very sweet and lovely and off she went. Au revoir, bye bien so, off she went. So, whisking it away here. So anyway, this lovely French lady, off she went, and just as we were about to go home, she comes back, she pops back. And she's got two boxes of eggs for us. Well, she's got two boxes of eggs for our friends. But she keeps giving our friends lots and lots of eggs. So many eggs that they haven't eaten all those eggs yet. 
So they gave us all these eggs. So I now have two dozen lovely, gorgeous French local eggs. Of course, all my eggs are French. I live in France. All my eggs are French. In it all goes. Let's put that out of the way. So it's not milk. Normally when you make pancakes, you make it with milk. No, not this one. One egg, 250 grams of buckwheat flour, and 500 milliliters of water. The really easy way to remember it is half, twice as much water to the weight of the flour. So 250 grams of buckwheat flour, 500 milliliters of the water, one egg, seven grams of salt, which I would say is one teaspoonful. Now, if I was a lovely traditional Breton lady, I would do this with a wooden spoon, and I would stand here, beat, 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 for about half an hour. But when I looked into all the hacks and tricks of how to do this, because there's no gluten in this to hold it together, I found the hack, I found the trick. And this is what the restaurants do, who make the galettes, excuse me. They make it and pop it in the fridge for two hours. You'll be thrilled to know, because if I show you this now, it's not very gloopy. It's not very gloopy. So there it goes. So that one is going to go in the fridge for two hours. And you're very lucky, because in the style of Blue Peter, here's one I prepared earlier. This does mean we will be eating galettes for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So I'm just going to have a quick moment to read your messages. Where are they? Back later, Sue's selling things on eBay. Good for you, Louise. Those tiles are looking lovely, aren't they? This uh, super guy did it. Hello, Sue Horton. Thank you very much. And Louise Church. And Louise, thank you very, very much for being here. So this now is going to be popped over here behind me in the sink. And I'll tell you more about these fillets. Now, here is this one. And you can see from this, ah, this one's been in the fridge. So I made this this morning. You see, it's viscous now. So even though it has absolutely no gluten, it's got some structure to hold it together. Love galettes, galettes, galettes. Michaela, they are wonderful, aren't they? I think when you come on holiday to Britain, France, and when you come to Brittany, and you look around, and you see all those creperies everywhere, you just feel like it's just unique to this area. So the another thing I need to tell you about these galettes is you cook them twice. So first of all you make them and then you're going to heat them again when you put the filling in them. And I am going to make a galette complète which is the same if you go to any crepery around Brittany and it's a pretty much the favourite one and it's usually the mid price one on the menu. So it's a buckwheat pancake with an egg, some Emmental cheese, and a slice of ham. And that's it. And we're going to have ours for salad. And this is actually our dinner. So it's pretty pedestrian today, isn't it? Pop round to my little French kitchen and stay with me whilst I cook my dinner. Let's just check your messages again. There we go. So I'm going to get this hot now. And I'm testing this today at what kind of heat. Because I've got an induction hole, it tends to get hotter, 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 or the pan gets quite hot. So, I've got my ladle ready. I have got my galette mixture. I've got my plates. I'm only going to make two. And after we've eaten our early supper, I will then make the rest of them, pile them up on a plate, cover them in foil and they'll keep in the fridge and I can eat those for a few days. They're really good for breakfast with some bacon, with some eggs. They make fantastic cold wraps and it, oh we're there, so we're there. So they make fantastic cold wraps, they're 
really good for breakfast, they're great in picnics and packed lunches, and obviously, they're superb in any form of glare. Now, I might have a little bit too much oil in there. Get on there. This is messy. This is messy. I can't talk to you for a bit for a moment. So, let's get my ladle full. I think that's not hot enough. I'm just making sure it's really hot. Because if it isn't hot, I thought I would drop that back in for a moment and keep talking to you. So yeah, so this is a dish that is regional to Brittany. Those buckwheat galettes. I'm just waiting, as you can see here, I'm waiting for the exact heat I need in my pan. I don't want it spitting, I don't want it too hot. If you're there and you're watching me, can you pop up a thummy? Can you pop, give me a like? Can you give me a heart? Can you give me a symbol to pop it up here so I know you're watching? Because I know quite a few of you watch, but you don't comment. That's fair enough. But I really would like to know you're there. Right, here we go. There we go. The lovely thing about the Breton galettes is it makes these super holes. Now I need to look in that direction because it needs to be one minute and a half on one side and 30 seconds on the other thank you very much yes give me some likes i know you're here give me some likes so i'm watching it now i think i'm at 30 seconds so one minute and a half on one side the steam coming off it as you can see here it's evaporating they're better the professionals can make these really really thin i'm not a professional so I'm not uh, somebody who's really good at making these. And I have to check the underneath to make sure, there we go, we're on. So they hold themselves quite well and flip it over. And there's the other side. And you can see the lovely galette texture of this. And it has the holes in it. I'm now gonna watch the clock now for 30 seconds to make sure I get it done on both sides. I'm at 15 seconds. Fifteen. Yum yum indeed. These are yum yums. And we're out. You can see that one. So I can flip it over. And you can see the other side as well. Popping a little bit more oil in. Now I'm only making two, but you can see here from my mixture that I've got enough to make ten. Let's get a ladle full. I want my lovely pancakes. Spread yourself around. There we are. So I'm going to put that away only going to make two today. That's going to go back in the fridge. I've no idea how long it keeps. I'm going to watch my clock. I'm going to go for the full minute and a minute and a half. That's what I mean by the pans gets hotter and hotter and hotter. Oh, I didn't. Uh, turn it down. for you isn't it it can sometimes go go quite wrong but I am not a chef I'm not in a crepery and in the creperies this is something you do have to be careful of they do sometimes add wheat flour to these because the wheat flour is cheaper and it makes it go further and it makes it stay together there is a there is a there is a wonderful lady in San Paul Leon Market who makes them they are wonderful. I've never had a bad one yet all over Brittany. There we are. If you come back and I can show you the holes in them. There they are. Steaming up the camera. 
So I need to just keep keep a check on it. I think we are there. Uh, that way. So that's the two done. And now I'm going to cool it down a little bit. Let's leave that to cool down a bit. Because the second time you cook it, because it's Brittany, and people seem to live on butter, it's, the, the place is just known for its beautiful dairy products. Wonderful Breton butter. And this is, I can't... Absolutely. If I'm cooking something and it goes wrong, I still eat it. I always eat it, Amanda. Always. That's what it really looks like. It all goes down, doesn't it? Once you've chewed it up, it all looks the same. I always eat it. Absolutely with you. So I'm cooling this down now. Oh, that's fierce today. Really fierce. So I cook it again now. Now this time, I want the pretty bit down. That is very hot today. I'm getting the butter in there. And the pretty side down. And it's low heat. And here's the trick, because I've watched them do this in the crepery. I seem to have picked up my salad with it there. So you put the egg on. Dead in the centre. And these eggs are so fresh that the egg whites are really thick. And then wait to see what they do. They spread, I need to cut the egg whites because these are so fresh. These were laid yesterday. Good old little chickens, aren't they? They're very small eggs because they seem to have Breton people and little people, and they seem to have little chickens. We've noticed now that all the eggs in the shops are quite small. They don't have those great big commercial... There we go. There we are. The second thing that goes in there, so I've got it on quite a low heat now, is a sprinkle of Emmental cheese. Put as much on as you like. We like cheesy cheese. We do like our cheese to be cheesy. Next thing we put in there. is our ham. Now if you know anything about Brittany, you'll know the things that they absolutely love here are dairy products and pork. They are known for it. So, if you have a big galette, you can fold it into four. I don't have a big galette. I have a very small galette. I need to turn it up a bit now. Want it to crisp. And it's getting there. Want it to crisp. You want the egg white to be cooked. You do not want the egg yolk to be cooked. You want the egg yolk to be as raw as you possibly can get it, like a good fried egg. There we are. I think we worked out that the Breton galette is like the Cornish pasty. Everyone said to you, oh, only this goes into a Breton galette. Oh no, a Breton galette can't have this or it can't have that. What we have seen of the crepery recipe menus that I've had a, a, a nose at recently. Nope, I'm not even going to risk it. So there's one. I'm going to stop and read your comments in a moment. There's one. I need two things to get this up with. one in. I'm going to check your comments. I'll read your comments in a moment. Because neither of my I like to eat scalding hot food. Plenty of bread on butter goes in there. I would say that would be about half a teaspoonful. Let's get the next one in. Oh, lovely little... Look at the size of 
this tiny egg. Look at it. Miniature chickens in Brittany. I thought to begin with I was being diddled by the shop. I thought, why are they giving me such small eggs? You can see a really fresh egg, can't you? The egg white is so proteiny. Spread it out, otherwise it just doesn't cook. There's a little dog at my feet today, and it's looking up at me as if to say, is any of that mine? No, it's not. It's all our dinner. There we are. Back to the, this is Emmental Rappe. And you might think to yourself, do you not just buy your cheese and grate it? This is the cheapest way to buy it. They love to buy their cheese grated. It's the cheapest way to buy it. So in it all goes. You can see here, it's a handful of cheese. Don't be shy. Do not be shy with the cheese in this. Cheesier the better. So that one there is about two euros. About two, two euros. It doesn't cost very much. And then in goes my ham. I fit it in. I only have little pancakes because I could only make them in my little frying pan. Oh, it's cooking nicely. Leave it a bit longer. Now I'm going to swipe away, put this ham away so it doesn't attract any flies. Try not to fall over a small, small dog. Try and find somewhere to stand that the small dog's not standing in. <laughs> now, there we go. Brett Anglettes, let's fold them over. Just heat that one, go a bit hotter with that one. You need to be nice and crispy underneath. I really hope those of you that love France get, uh, get here this year. I know many of you have had trips cancelled because Nobody was going anywhere, were they? Safely staying at home. But I hope if you are trying to get here, that you get here. Oh, I've broken my yoke. I'll have this one, Michael. Because I've broken the yoke. So there we go. And I'm going to have a quick clean up. So those are galettes. Complete. Now, let's have a quick spike to see your messages. Just got on. Are these gluten free? Yes, they are gluten free. That's why there's two of them and I can have them. If I'm cooking something, I can't afford not to eat it. Absolutely. I need to wipe my nose here. But Sam told Leon Market and they look forward to them every time we visit. Can't wait for restrictions to be lifted. Michaela, it won't be long. It won't be long. You'll be able to come here soon. And yum, yum indeed. So they are really good. Now, let's look at what we eat ours with. I really wanted to show you this. This is Chen. Chen is oak in France. And the lettuce looks like oak leaves. Chen. Let's put our Chen on with it. We'll eat more of this. Oh, I broke my yoke. I broke my yoke. Never mind. As you said, Annie, I cannot afford to waste decent food. It will be eaten just the same. And it's very typical if you went into a local preppery that you would have just a basic salad with this. Just a basic salad. Let's have a few bits of tomato on ours as well. Very Breton. A few bits of cucumber. I'm a 1970s girl. I can't, ha I can't have a salad without cucumber. And then some beetroot over the top. Beetroot over the top. There we are. The last time I did my leftovers cooking, I'm just going to check your messages again. Hello, Rhoda. It's very nice to see you. There we go. I made some dressing. So this one was, um, I think it's the German style mustard. It's a very mild, sweet mustard. And I had the mustard left in the jar. Now to this, I added my vinegar, my oil, 
three, two, one, so three parts oil to one part vinegar, dash of salt and pepper, and that was that. Lumpy bit. There we are. Breton galettes, complete. Served with salad. And now, you pop back up to me. There they are. And at this moment, quick Facebook Live this week. This is what we're going to be having for dinner in just a few moments. Thank you very much for popping by to see me. I'm off somewhere nice tomorrow. We discovered there's another charity shop near to us, so we are not necessarily going to go and buy anything, but it's my day off tomorrow, so I'm going to go and have a look in the afternoon. And if there's anything interesting, I'll take some pictures of that and either pop them on Facebook or onto Instagram for you to see what was there. So thank you very much for coming. Uh, this will be up on YouTube if you like it and you're watching this on YouTube. <coughs> that's the dog. <laughs> Always got to make an appearance. Uh, please subscribe. Thank you very much for popping by to my thrifty French kitchen here in northwest France in Brittany. And now we are going to have our dinner. So thank you very much for popping by and I will see you next time. Goodbye.